Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving. Bless the Lord, bless the holy name of God. All my being, bless the Lord, remembering the goodness of God. Loving and forgiving by you, O Lord. So to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving. Good morning. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and as it's September 11th, today we'll remember all those people who lost their lives in the attack 21 years ago, and uh, those who mourn them. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to lead the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf, and worshiping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked these people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. 
But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. In all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented his punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, I will rise up and go to my father. I will rise up and go to my father. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin, cleanse me. I will rise up and go to my father. A clean heart create for me, O Lord, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. I will rise and go to my Father. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God. You will not spurn. I will rise and go to my Father. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. 
What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel passage, we heard three, par three parables. <clears throat> about, one about the lost sheep, one on the lost coin, and then the, the big one, the prodigal son. And they should all move our minds to thinking about how God feels about the sinner, how God feels about sin, uh, how he looks at us in our darker moments. And we need to think about all that. Um, because none of us is perfect, and we all have done things that we're not proud of. But we understand that, in a sense, or in a very real way, God understands. He is a God of justice, but he also is a God of mercy. And Jesus came and died on the cross because we needed him to. Uh, he paid for our sins 
opened the gates of heaven, and he rose again and gave us the promise of everlasting life. So salvation is there, redemption is there. All we have to do is accept it. But as we look at these, all the readings today, we could see how this is made manifest. Now, that first reading was from the book of Exodus. And uh, in it, you know, God was on the mountain with Moses and the Lord was delivering the Ten Commandments to him. And he was going to then deliver them to the Israelites. They were waiting in the valley below. Well, the first commandment, of course, was, I am the Lord your God, thou shalt not have any gods besides me. And as the Lord was delivering these commandments, and that one in particular, the Israelites were down in the valley getting all their precious metal together and building a golden calf so they would have a god to worship, someone to lead them to the promised land. And um, so, of course, God is rather disappointed. And saying God, that God was rather disappointed is the understatement of the year. God was terribly angry. Uh, so angry that he said, I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. So what he was saying was, Moses, stand over there. I'm going to destroy them, and you and your descendants can be the great nation. And that's when Moses stops and says, no, Lord, uh, we don't want to, you know, go too far here. He, he does his best to calm God down. I always thought it was kind of an interesting story. You know, you could hear Moses say, no, God, we want to think about this. Uh, you took these people out of, the, out of Egypt. Uh, you, you don't want people to be saying he took them out of Egypt just to destroy them in the desert. And don't forget, you made promises to Abraham and Isaac and Israel. And we need to keep those promises. And so anyway, God relents, and he has mercy on his people. Now, if you flash f or step forward to the way the gospel is presented today, you could see that uh, things are a little different now because Jesus tells the story of a great betrayal. Some spoiled son says to his father, Father, give me my inheritance now. So as far as I'm concerned, you're dead. And the father does it without complaint. He would have had to feel terribly sad, terribly betrayed, maybe even a little angry, but he gives in to his son's wishes. Now, in that story, of course, we are the son because we sometimes turn away from God. We sometimes forget how lucky we are to be with him. And the father in that story represents our Lord. And he is the father who his children sometimes go astray. Well, anyway, as the story unfolds and the son realizes how miserable he is, he comes back home. And before he can even finish the speech that he has prepared, the father, who has seen him from a long way off and run to meet him, and, and ran to meet him, says quickly, bring him a robe and put sandals on his feet and a ring on his finger and take the fatted calf. He's overjoyed because his son has come to his senses and has come home. And what Jesus is trying to say is, when we sin, what does God want? What does God want for us or from us? Does he want destruction? No. Does he want damnation? No. What God wants is conversion. What God wants is for us to come back home. And that's what that story is about. And he even explains it to the older son, who is upset that his, son, his brother is being welcomed back. He says he was dead, and now he's alive. We have to rejoice. And that's the way God feels about us. Sometimes he hates the things we do, but he never hates us. He has love for his children, and what he wants from us in our darker moments is conversion, a return to the right path. If you think about our second reading today, it's a reading from uh, the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, 
That's exactly what Paul is writing about. He's talking about how he was in the old days. We've all read the Acts of the Apostles. We know that when he was Saul of Tarsus and he was persecuting the early church, he was doing some terrible things. But God gave him another chance. God opened his eyes to the truth. And St. Paul spent the rest of his life being grateful. If you think about what Paul went through in life, all the shipwrecks, all the beatings, all the attempts on his life, being thrown out of this town or that, and even when he was accepted, he was, you know, not living life for himself. He was being the servant of his brothers and sisters. He did all that because he knew it was worth it. He did all, he underwent all those things, bore all those burdens because he knew what Jesus had done for him, that he had, he had been given this second chance. And what he wanted for everyone he met was for them to come to know this Lord who loved us enough to die on the cross, this Lord who hates none of us, this Lord who wants nothing more than for the sinner to return home and change his ways, uh, a God who is about love and compassion and reconciliation, a God who is infinitely just but is also infinitely merciful. Paul thought that was a wonderful, beautiful way to see God, and he was eternally grateful for it. And so he was willing to bear any burden, undergo any difficulty, put up with any frustration, all in the name of you know, the Lord who loved him enough to save him on the road to Damascus that one day. And so what we need to make sure we do is understand that no matter what we've done, God will forgive. He wants us to change our ways, but he will forgive us. And no matter what our brothers and sisters have done, we need to make sure that we are agents of that reconciliation, agents of that mercy. And we may need to tell people sometimes, you've done something wrong and you need to change, but ultimately what we want to work towards is helping them to see the light, helping them to see that there's a better way, and helping them to do their best to get back on the path, the road to righteousness, the road that leads to God's heavenly kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. For the church, may God guide and strengthen her efforts to share the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and terrorism, may God's peace prevail in hearts everywhere. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are grieving the death of a loved one, may God's Holy Spirit bring them comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For we who worship and share community here, may the Holy Spirit continue to enkindle in us the fire of his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who lost their lives on September 11th, 2001, and for all those who have died, may the Lord God welcome them to his dwelling place where they may offer him continuous praise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, 
You sent your Son to bring us new life. We ask that you hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We offer them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. In this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Lawrence our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, and peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please recite with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Well, as always, I'd like to thank you for being with, here with us today. Uh, because today is September 11th, the anniversary of that horrible day, I've been told I should sing something. And uh, so we're going to try, let there be peace on earth, if I can remember all the words. So uh, please sing along. 
Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every breath I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Well, that was a little bit high, but uh, I'd like to thank you for singing along with me. And I hope you have a, a good week. Say a prayer tomorrow for, or today, I mean, for our nation, uh, that it may know healing and peace, and for the world, that it may know healing and peace. And I'm not a huge fan of that song, musically speaking, but I like the idea that there should be peace. But it needs to begin with us. There ought to be no place in our hearts for hatred and no place in our actions for violence. It's, it's part of the Christian ideal and it's something that we oftentimes fail to live up to. So keep uh, doing your best in that regard. Follow that example of Jesus. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you and do your best to love all. Anyway, have a good rest of the week.